But we will be doing uh, infrastructure. And I told Steve just today, we're not doing anything unless we get a payroll tax cut. That is so important to the success of our country and to the following year, because I think that the following year has a chance to be one of our best years. That'll you be all believe that that is how you stimulate demand? Is, is that payroll tax cut? I mean, where do you look at that in the big picture? Well, the president's been very clear on that, and he's spoken about a payroll tax cut over the years. But I, I would also say to that viewer that uh, the, the, the immediate way we deal with joblessness is by opening up America again. That was President Donald Trump, uh, as well as Vice President Mike Pence, promising to not pass a desperately needed phase four stimulus package in the wake of the economic downturn caused by the coronavirus pandemic, unless they're given a payroll tax cut. Uh, so right now, congressional leaders in the White House are negotiating a deal to help fund state governments. Um, and look, the situation with the states is pretty dire. And he addresses this earlier as, oh, it's just a bunch of states with poor management Democrat states. It's not just Democratic-led states that are asking for this aid. There are Republican states who are also incredibly poorly mismanaged that are also asking for this, but they don't get called out by the president. So it's, you know, of course, pure partisanship on display. Uh, but the situation, like I said, is pretty terrible in a lot of states because you have these stay-at-home orders that have ground their revenues to a halt, uh, and you have unemployment benefits, many uh, millions of people that are now unemployed, navigating through systems that were never meant to take this kind of strain, and that, of course, is draining whatever little money these states have left. The federal government's job is actually to help these states as we are in a national crisis, but the Trump administration is basically leaving these states twisting in the wind. As a result, you have a fair number of states, a lot uh, actually, that are starting to open themselves back up, despite the fact that experts have repeatedly warned that doing this would be absolutely disastrous. You have experts like Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks. Uh, that are warning that the death toll will be significantly higher if the states open up too early, as many already have. You have Georgia that's seeing a spike in cases. You have Florida, South Carolina. You have a spike that is coming in Michigan following, of course, the massive protests that have happened in the state house. The Associated Press did an analysis of how many states are failing to do their coronavirus testing. Uh, these standards put out, of course, uh, based on a federal government figure and on a Harvard recommendation, uh, say that you should, uh, as a state, be testing 2% of your population per month. Harvard says that you should get at least 500,000 people tested for coronavirus per day before easing coronavirus lockdowns. Only 10 states have hit both of those marks, while 19 of those have failed both of those marks. All 19 states that have failed both of their testing metrics have already begun to reopen or ease lockdown measures. You, they include states like Georgia, Florida, California, which is quite surprising, Nevada, Colorado, Washington, Louisiana, and many others. So now Trump is not keen on helping these states unless he gets something in return. And the something that he is asking for, of course, would mean the eventual destruction down the road of two of the most popular programs and effective programs in political history. The payroll tax cut, which of course helps fund Social Security and Medicare. Now he is using this as a way to say, I'm going to help the 30 plus million Americans um, that have lost their jobs. Unfortunately, you kind of have to have an income to, you know, you have to be bringing in checks in order to get or benefit from the payroll tax cut. So the real reason that they want it, of course, is because it defunds Social Security and Medicare, which down the, uh, down the line, and this has been a Republican priority for decades, is to defund it, starve it of revenue, and then eliminate it. Privatize Medicare, privatize Social Security, 
Now imagine that retirement, your health benefits, now being held by bankers on Wall Street, subject, of course, to the whims of Wall Street speculation and trading. Anybody who's paid attention to the stock market, especially at the beginning of this COVID-19 crisis, realizes that maybe putting your eggs in the Wall Street basket is not exactly the smartest thing in the world. Just saying. Uh, now, there is more opposition, of course, to the payroll tax cut. University of Michigan economists Betsy uh, Stevenson and Justin Wolfers had wrote in a New York Times op-ed back in March that a payroll tax cut would give, quote, the biggest breaks to those with the biggest paychecks, the biggest earners, and delivers nothing to those who have lost their pay. Now, I believe that we should have direct payments until this crisis is over and for at least a year after. There is a bill floated by progressives that authorizes a one-time payment of $2,000 and then $1,000 a month for at least a year after this crisis is over. That would at least ensure that many American families, working families or families that are unable to work, now have something to rely on and to help them help their communities reopen as they'll be able to afford to frequent those businesses. Now, this op-ed continues by saying, it is a slow infusion of cash, a payroll tax cut, dripping out paycheck by paycheck, and of course, those with low paychecks see very little effect in that tax cut. Social Security Works also chimed in, saying the payroll tax cut is a code for gut Social Security and Medicare's dedicated funding, then demand benefit cuts, and implores Democrats to stay strong and continue blocking Trump's terrible idea. On top of a payroll tax cut, Republican congressional leaders in the Trump administration are demanding that any future stimulus include legal immunity for corporations if their employees contract COVID-19 while they're on the job. Of course, they want to bring you back to work. And if you get coronavirus, well, that's that's on you. And it's a sad day for you. It doesn't matter if we, as a company, didn't actually protect you, didn't give you PPE, gloves, masks, forced you to work in close quarters, with people who may or may not be sick. Many people, of course, can carry coronavirus and be asymptomatic. Doesn't matter to them. Blanket immunity for corporations so that we can force people to go back to work before it is safe to do so and not be held liable for the gruesome results. Corporate America. And on top of that, a temporary measure to help destroy both your health care and your retirement. That is the Republican plan. It kind of shows you that Republicans never waste a good crisis. Not only has the coronavirus response mainly been a way to transfer massive amounts of wealth back to the top 1% and corporations while giving the American people crumbs, one $1,200 check that basically is eaten up by one month's rent. Well, it's been a couple of months since this started. Rent was due a couple of days ago. I wonder how many people were unable to make that $1,200 stretch when your rent is somewhere around $1,000 to begin with. Not only that, but they try to wreck the two most popular programs, most effective programs in American history, and also let the uh, post office go bankrupt. And then they sit back and watch millions of Americans get sick with coronavirus. Now we have over 1.1 million cases and, and rising and over 67,000 deaths. All showing that America right now is a deeply flawed and corrupt country with a corrupt government. If any other country had run like this, we would call it a banana republic. We would be calling in inspectors. We would be targeting leftist leaders. Note how I say leftist leaders, because when right-wing governments 
especially in South America, run full of corruption, we turn a blind eye. So that's probably why we turn a blind eye now, because we have a Republican administration, a Republican Senate, and a Democratic-controlled, but overall still conservative House majority. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.